Rice Chex and Wheat Chex, the bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages, present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are trying to escape from a mansion on the planet Venus, where they're being held prisoners by Emil Gargoth, leader of the Cobra Gang. Suddenly, Happy moves toward a large cabinet and opens it. Wow, is this a break, Commander? Weapons, ray guns, blasters, paralyzers. Take a couple of ray guns, Happy. Hey, something just made me go to this cabinet. A real strong hunch. I know how to take the ray guns. Those are blasters. Put them back. Oh. Well, yes, sir. Uh, well, I'm not arguing, sir, but... Wouldn't the sight of a blaster have more effect on Gargo? All right, it doesn't matter. Let's get uh, careful, Happy. You're pointing the gun right at me. Lower your arm. I can't. Uh, something's controlling my movements. Happy, lower that gun. I- I'm trying to. Commander, my finger is squeezing the trigger. I can't stop it. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure The Secret of Dr. Borodek. <laughs> Plenty delicious, plenty good. Yes, sir, Space Patrollers, those are the words I use when I talk about rice checks. Now, Space Patroller, how about you? Who, me? That's right. What words would you use to tell me how good rice checks taste? Super keen and senior, George. That's the way rice checks taste to me, Captain Tufeld. Swell, and hey, how about that modern bite size that rice checks has? What do you say about that? Just right for a bite with a real smooth fit for a spoon. Man, that's great. Now you have yourself a good, nourishing breakfast with rice checks, and what happens? That's it, Space Patroller. Yes, sir, gang, that's exactly the kind of blast-off you get after a nourishing breakfast with rice checks. But any way you say it, any way you eat them, out of the bowl or out of the box, rice checks are tops three ways. For taste... For size, for get up and go. For sweet whole wheat, try wheat checks. Look for rice checks and wheat checks in the run and white checkerboard package with a full color picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside and the free Space Patrol trading card inside. Checks, rice or wheat, real neat. And now today's Space Patrol adventure, the secret of Dr. Borodek. On ten planets, space patrol agents are ready to pounce upon known members of the Cobra Gang. But the syndicate of criminals appears to have suspended all operations, and its shrewd leader, Emil Gargoth, has gone into hiding. The name of the dread organization seems to have been dropped completely from public minds. Certainly, it's far from the minds of two men who sit chatting in a comfortable mansion on the outskirts of Venus City. One is the wealthy and elderly Andrew Means, retired interplanetary financier. The other is his host the youthful-appearing Dr. Clement Borodek, a mysterious yet popular figure in United Planet society. After a lengthy discussion, Andrew Means suddenly turns to Dr. Borodek. Dr. Borodek, I want to know your secret. Secret? What secret? The secret that has enabled you to live for centuries. Mr. Means, are you sure you feel well? Now, don't try to change the subject. You're a man of mystery, Dr. Borodek. You live well. Your fine mansion here, your... Splendid laboratory, the freedom to travel. Now, I don't know how you get your money, and I don't care. But you do have something that I want. The secret of a long life. Life two or three times beyond a normal span. Mr. Means, a man of your wisdom certainly can't fall for this... this superstitious gossip about me. Doctor, I've had you investigated. I've done some of it directly in my talks with you. No man could know so much about so many things unless he had lived through them. I happen to have a deep curiosity and a photographic memory, that's all. Dr. Borodek, I have documents to prove that you were living 125 years ago. Yet, today you could pass for 35. I will pay you for that secret. Really, I don't know whether to be flattered or insulted. Uh, Doctor, I'm an old man. With the best of care and medical attention, I can't expect to live many more years. But you can prolong my life, just as you have prolonged your own. Tell me how, and I'll give you anything you ask. I'm sorry, Mr. Means, but you've let your fears and your desires deceive you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an experiment underway in my laboratory that requires my attention. 
In his central office at Space Patrol headquarters on the man-made planet Terra, Commander Corey goes over reports from Space Patrol agents with Cadet Happy. Well, from the looks of these reports, the Cobra gang certainly seems to have gone out of business. Yes, sir. Maybe we finally scared Gargoth into quitting. He may have quit, but I haven't. Yeah, but unless Gargoth does something or shows himself, how can we get him? There are two reports here that merit looking into, Happy. A man of Gargoth's description was seen in Mercury City with a certain Dr. Borodek. Dr. Borodek? Who's he? Well, my personal opinion is that he's a fraud. He makes especially of getting into the good graces of important people. Oh, hobnobbing with the elite, huh? Yes, I think he's a confidence man, but he works so smoothly we've never been able to get anything on him. Well, uh, maybe Borodek knows where Gargoth is. Borodek is the kind of a crook that has to appear respectable in order to operate. He might tell us what he knows about Gargoth, providing we convince him his own reputation is in danger. Well, uh, where's this Dr. Borodek now, Commander? He's got a fancy estate outside Venus City. Oh, and we were blasting off for Venus tomorrow anyway. Right. We just arranged to drop in on Dr. Borodek. In his mansion on Venus, Dr. Clement Borodek walks briskly down the corridor leading toward his laboratory. But as he enters the room, his placidly confident face assumes an expression of worry and distrust. Seated before a control panel, a huge man glowers at a series of viewscope screens, each mirroring a view of a room in the huge house. As the big man turns, Dr. Borodek's face suddenly changes. He smiles pleasantly. Well, I see you've figured out the controls for yourself, Mr. Gargoth. Mighty clever setup, Borodek. So while you're in this lab, you can see what's going on anywhere in the building. Oh, I frequently have guests. It helps me maintain my reputation for being able to see into the past and into the future just by knowing what's going on in the present. <laughs> yes. I've just watched the way you handle Andrew Means. I'm afraid you went too far, Borodek. They practically insulted him. Of course. Nobody dares insult Andrew Means. When someone does, he's intrigued. Especially when that person has something Means wants. Then you think he'll be back with another offer? Of course. He's back in his suite in Venus City Hotel, brooding over the fact that I have the secret of long life. The secret he wants more than anything in the universe. Yes. I am amazed that he fell for the fantastic idea. <laughs> He actually thinks you're 200 years old. Why shouldn't he believe it? Didn't we make sure those agents would find evidence of it? How much do you think he'll pay for your uh, secret? If you'll let me work with him, all he has. But it'll take time. How much time? A month, perhaps. I can't wait. If you can get me a million credits within a week, I'll give you a quarter of it. Make it 300,000 and I'll include my latest invention, the robot suit. Look, Borodick, let's not try to bargain. I need a lot of money, quick. You can get it from Andrew Means without involving the Cobra Gang. But you couldn't get it from Means without my connections, my agents who planted the evidence of your immortal youth. Now, shall we quit stalling? All right, Mr. Gargoth. Forget the robot suit. I can easily find other buyers. I'll settle for a quarter of anything I get from Andrew Means. Good. Uh, Borodick, hmm? tell me the truth. Can you actually control the actions of anyone wearing that robot suit? Of course. If you like, I'll show you how it works. We might even use it on Andrew Means. Oh. Have you thought of what will happen after Means buys my secret of long life and finds that he's still growing older? What do we care? You can tell him he waited too long to use it. That won't satisfy Andrew Means. He'll charge he's been swindled. There'll be an investigation. Uh, yes, you're right. Means has the influence to cause plenty of trouble. We've got to get rid of him before he knows whether your big secret is a fake or not. Exactly. And with my robot suit, we can make it look as though Means met with a fatal accident through his own carelessness. You mean we can make him do something that's entirely against his will? Yes. The strongest will in the universe is powerless against the force that controls my robot suit. Show me how it works, Dr. Borg. An hour after they arrive at Venus City, Buzz Corey and Cadet Happy have complete reports from Space Patrol agents operating in the capital city of the planet Venus. In a special office at Venus City headquarters, Buzz outlines a plan to happen. As far as Bordek is concerned, we'll be there to find out about a former associate of his, Anton Tolver. Then you can bring up Gargoth, sort of, incidentally. Yes, but even forgetting Gargoth for the moment, we might be able to stop one of Bordek's dirty deals. What do you mean, sir? A very prominent and influential man has been visiting Bordek regularly over the past few weeks. He's the type of man who ordinarily would spot Bordek as a crook right off the bat and avoid him, but the doctor seems to have him fascinated. Who is the man, sir? An elderly retired businessman, Happy. Andrew Means. 
While he was active, he never had time to worry about himself. But now he keeps going from doctor to doctor, from specialist to specialist. Is he sick? No, he's in perfect health. But he has an obsession, Happy. He has offered doctors fabulous sums of money for every year they would guarantee to keep him alive. Naturally, no legitimate doctor has accepted this offer, but Bordek is just a type who might prey upon the fears of a worried old man. Now, come on, Happy. Let's go out and have a talk with Dr. Borodek. Meantime, in the library of Dr. Borodek's estate, Borodek listens while Andrew Means continues an urgent plea that's been going on for three hours. It isn't fair, Borodek. He just isn't fair. Now, look at me. I, I haven't begged for anything in my life. But I'm... I'm begging you to sell me your secret. Sell me your secret! Mr. Means, assuming for the moment that an extended lifespan were possible, what makes you think you would enjoy it? What's that to you? Well, we learn as we live, don't we? But just when we learn to enjoy life to its fullest, it's taken away from us. Borodek, people think of me as a fairly good man. Isn't that true? Yes, Mr. Means, quite good. Well, I've made mistakes. Give me a chance to correct them. Extend my life, Dr. Borodek. What will you lose? All right, Mr. Means. What do you offer? One million credits. When can you get the money? I can have it here in three hours. Good. When you get back, I'll uh, administer the treatment. Dr. Borodek is apparently alone in his mansion on Venus City when Commander Corey and Cadet Happy arrive to question him. The doctor is quite at ease as Buzz and Happy stand in the same library where an hour before the elderly Andrew Means pleaded his cause. Of course, Commander, I remember this Anton Tolver, but he hasn't worked for me since oh, a year ago, on Saturn, I think it was. All right, Doctor, thank you. Oh, there's something else I wanted to ask. Yes, Commander? Where is Emil Gargoth? Emil Gargoth? The man you were seen with in Mercury City 12 days ago. I don't seem to recall Emil Gargoth. And you've never heard of the Cobra Gang? Mm, yes, I've heard of it. But then, Commander, you have your sphere of interest and activities, and I have mine. Andrew Means, for example. Just what do you mean by that? I understand Mr. Means has been visiting you recently. Mm, yes, he has. Professionally? Commander, I don't think that's any of your business. Well, since you're so frank, I don't suppose you'd object to a brainograph test at Venus City Headquarters. A brainograph test? On what? Your qualifications to be called doctor and your knowledge of Gargoth. Will you come with me? Well, I, I... I have a warrant, Doctor. How about it? Really? This is most extraordinary. Get your hands up, Corey. You too, Cadet. That voice, Commander. It, it's Gargoth. That's right. And I've got a ray gun here. So don't try anything. Well, Gargoth, from your past performances, I know you aren't showing up to rescue your pal, Borodek. You could have escaped while I was taking him to headquarters. Apparently, you need time to put over a deal. A deal involving Andrew Means, perhaps. You're pretty smart, Corey. Yes, Means will be here very soon. Uh, Mr. Gargoth, shut up, Bordick. I'll handle this. Yes, Corey, when Means shows up, he'll have a million credits for me. Then I'll get rid of him. And you and the cadet will get the blame for it. Oh, is that so? <laughs> <laughs> I warned you, Corey. Bordick, get Corey and the cadet out of the library before Andrew Means arrives. Get them into the robot suits. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. This is Dick Tufeld in Los Angeles reporting on the first airplane with swept back wings used in the U.S. Air Force, North American's F-86 Sabre Jet Fighter. In a moment, we'll hear from George Welch, the famous test pilot of the Sabre Jet. The Sabre is 37 feet long, weight 8 tons, wings are swept back at a 35-degree angle, top speed more than 650 miles per hour. Now, George Welch, recorded at Edwards Air Force Base. I was lucky enough to fly the F-86 Sabre jet for the first time. The first time up or the 50th, every flight is important. That's why I have to keep in top shape. I like to eat good food with lots of energy in it. Rice checks and wheat checks meet that test, and they taste exactly right. I think you'll like them, too. Make sure you keep yourself ready for action, the way George Welch and lots of other famous test pilots do. Eat rice checks or wheat checks every morning. The cereals that are tops three ways. Tops for taste, for size, for real get-up-and-go. 
That's Chex, wheat or rice. And remember, they're tops with America's top pilots. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Secret of Dr. Borodek. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have visited the mansion of Dr. Borodek in Venus City, not knowing that the doctor is shielding Emil Gargoth, the head of the Cobra Gang. When Buzz asked Borodek to submit to a brainograph test at headquarters, Gargoth suddenly appeared and knocked Buzz and Happy out with blast from a ray gun. Right now, it's an hour later. Buzz and Happy find themselves prisoners in a small locked room. Commander... Look how we're dressed. I was just noticing, Happy. What did Gargoth do with our uniforms? Evidently his plan depends on our not looking like space patrollers. Plan? Remember what he said just before he put us to sleep with the ray gun? He's going to use us to get rid of Andrew Means. Sure, but how's this outfit going to help? I don't know. Let's try getting out of here. Uh, Locked. Luckily, Gargoth didn't think of removing my ring. Uh Uh-oh, the electronic key. Right. It's an electronic lock in the door. This ring may solve the combination. I'll try it. A few turns of the settings ought to tell the story. It worked. Yes. The door's open. Now, remember, Hap. Our job is to protect Andrew Means. Yes, sir, but what with? We're unarmed. We'll find something. Come on. Why are you puttering around here in the lab? Just getting the props ready for the final act, Mr. Gargoth. Uh, what do you mean? I want Andrew Means to be impressed when he sees the miraculous potion that will make him live indefinitely. Here, what do you think of it? <laughs> Looks all right, but then anything would do. I can't agree, Mr. Gargoth. When a man is paying a million credits for a few drops of liquid, he should get his money's worth. You'll note that the liquid glows. Isn't that a beautiful violet light? Yes, Is it poisonous? Naturally, and quite sudden and painless. Andrew Means will never know he's been swindled. And when Means is finished, we force Corey and the cadet to carry him out. And over the cliff. You're sure you can control their movements to that extent? You'll see. Speaking of Corey, he and the cadet should be conscious by now. I'll check. Let's turn on the viewscope monitor. They're gone. They got out of the room. Mr. Gargoth, bring that robot suit control box here quickly while I try to locate Corey on the other screens. All right. They're not there. They're there. Uh, there they are, in the downstairs hall. Here's the control box. You work it, Mr. Gargoth, just for practice. Whatever you do, keep them from going near that cabinet. I've got some weapons stashed in it. Well, they're just looking around now. Can we hear what they're saying? Yes, and after we get them under control, you can talk to them. Just throw these two switches. Look, Bordick. You go down to the library and get ready for Andrew Means. I'll handle Corey and the cadet. Uh, what do you have in mind, Mr. Gargoth? Just leave things to me. All right. You understand the robot suit controls, don't you? These dials and levers operate the cadet's suit. The other set works Corey's. Yes, yes, I know. Watch me make the cadet turn to the left. You turn it the wrong way. He's headed right for the cabinet. Here. Well, I, I can do it. I can do it. Just get out and let me alone. All right, Mr. Gargoth, sure. I wish I knew the layout of this house. Since we're unarmed, we've got to catch a Gargoth and Borodek by surprise. Uh, I hope we get them before they get Andrew Means. Happy, what are you doing? Uh, well, going to this cabinet, I guess. Hey, this is a break, Commander. Look what's in the cabinet. Weapons, ray guns, blasters, paralyzers. Take a couple of ray guns, Happy. Hey, something just made me go to this cabinet. A real strong hunch. No, Hap, take the ray guns. Those are blasters. Put them back. Oh, well, yes, sir. I, I'm not arguing with you, sir, but well, wouldn't the sight of a blaster have more effect on Gargoth? All right, it doesn't matter. But I'd hate to have to use a blaster, even on Gargoth. Be careful, Hap. You're putting that gun right at me. Lower your arm. Well, I, I can't. Something's controlling my movements. Happy, lower that gun. Well, I, I'm trying to, but... Commander, my finger's squeezing the trigger. I can't stop it. Smoking rockets. Sure lucky you ducked, Commander. I'm sorry. What in the universe came over you, Happy? I don't know. It was like something had hold of my arm. Commander, it's happening again. This time you won't be able to duck, Corey. Gargoth. That's right. I'm in Borodek's lab, right above you, watching you through a viewscope. But I can control every move you make. You're my puppets. It's these suits. I can feel the fabric tightening on my legs. That's right, Commander. 
You and the cadet are wearing Dr. Boradek's robot suits. Under electronic impulses, the fibers contract just like muscles. I haven't had enough practice yet to control both suits at once, so I'll merely keep you lying down on the floor, Commander. Aim, cadet. Happy step on that strip of rug. Move quickly. Squeeze the trigger. Look out, Commander! I... Sorry I had to yank the carpet out from under your hat. I'm glad you did. You're only delaying things, Commander. And it won't do you any good to grab Happy's arm. I can still make him point the gun at you. Happy, I've spotted the viewscope camera. The lens is right under that map of Venus on the wall. Yeah, I see it. We tend to struggle. When your aim's right, pull the trigger. Let go of that gun, Happy! He can't let go, Commander. See, I'm easily controlling his arm. Lower. Lower. The gun is just above your head now. <laughs> that, you clumsy fool, you've destroyed the viewscope camera. It's not going to help you any. I can't see you. But I can keep you from moving until Boradek and I are ready for you. My legs, I, I can't move them. Just set these controls. There. That'll hold the two of you. Oh, Commander, for your information, the viewscope screen from the library shows that Andrew Means has arrived. Boradek and I arranged for you to dispose of him and yourselves. See you later, gentlemen. Wow. We're really in a spot. Yes. Got to think of a way to break the control of these suits. Yeah, but the control is up in the lab, and we can't move. Must be a control center in the suit itself. A unit that picks up the impulses from the control transmitter. Yeah, where could it be? This whole suit is, is just like smooth fabric. Except across the chest. It's built up heavier there. Hap, can you move at all? I, I could turn my body from the hips up. That's all. Good. I'll try to roll over on my back. And you swing down hard on my chest. And break the controls. It's worth a try. <laughs> All right, Hap. Swing hard with your fist. <coughs> Try it again. Are you sure you won't change your mind, Mr. Means? Now, you agreed to sell me some of the potion, Dr. Borodek. I've got the money right here. Now, surely you aren't going to miss a few drops. After all, I'm giving you a million credits. Well, very well. Inside this endurium canister is a sealed flask. It, it glows. Yes, Mr. Means. It glows with an immortal light. Uh, what a pity there is so little of it. You see now why I'm reluctant to part with even a few drops. Uh, w- what if something happens to me on the way back to the city? Uh, suppose the plastic container breaks. Uh, do you have an endurium container? I think I can find one in my lab. Uh, but to be safe, why don't you drink a few drops here? Now. It's an excellent idea. There's a small glass. I'll pour a few drops in it. Here, Mr. Means. How oh, careful. Thank you. Now, I, I just drink this. Is that right? That's right. To a long life, Mr. Means. Uh, Don't drink uh, that, Mr. Means. Corey! Uh, now, look what you've done. You spilled it. The most precious fluid in the universe. Happy, watch Borodek. Yes, sir. Uh, what's the meaning of this? Calm down, Mr. Means. Calm down, indeed, when the space patrol ears of this Mr. Means, I'm Buzz Corey, commander-in-chief of the space patrol. Do you think I'm a fool? I do, Mr. Means. You're all fools. Gargoth! Don't move, cadet. You either, Corey, or you get this blast gun. Gargoth, I thought you said you had him under control. The control must have gotten out of adjustment. I brought it down here for you to test. All right, keep him covered. Dr. Borodek, you mean this really is Commander Corey? That's right, Means. He almost upset our plans. That secret liquid is just the opposite of a life potion. If one drop of that stuff had touched your tongue, you'd be lying there on the floor. But if this robot suit control mechanism works, your finish will be more exciting. Want to carry out our original plan then, Mr. Gargoth? Yes. We'll force Corey and the cadet to walk over the cliff carrying Means. You can't do that. You can't. For a million credits, Mr. Means, I could do anything. Try the control, Borodek. Make the cadet walk toward me. Fight it, Happy. The way I told you to in the other room. Huh? Oh, yes, sir. Oh. It's working. He's straining against the control. Uh, what is he going to do? He's going to pick you up, Means. Borodek, control Corey. The power in that robot suit, the cadet can lift Means with one arm. But I'll control Corey, too, just to show you how it's done. That's it. You've got them both moving now, like puppets. Okay, have a rush them. Okay, Hap, that does it. Pick up that blast gun. Yes, sir. Mordick, why did you cut the control? He didn't. We did. We broke him. 
All right, Mr. Means. That stack of money is yours, I believe. Take it and hold on to it. Uh, no, Commander. I'm not going to hold on to it. I'm going to give it away. This man here promised that this money would ensure me a long life. I'm sorry, Mr. Means. This must be a disappointment to you. No, not at all, Commander. In laboratories all over the solar system, legitimate scientists are working on methods to prolong life for everyone. This money is going to help them. That's a fine, generous idea, Mr. Means. I, uh, I never did a generous thing in my life. I'm going out of retirement and make more money for this research. I'll see that those scientists get results even if I have to stand over them for the next hundred years. You know, Mr. Means, I believe you will. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Hiya, Space Patrollers. Cadet Happy here. You know, the Commander and I have been telling you all along that checks are tops for get up and go. So if you haven't tried them yet, grab yourself a good nourishing breakfast in the morning with a bowl full of rice checks or wheat checks, and you'll see what we mean. Use just cream and sugar or slice up a big banana over them. Eat up and zowie, you're up and at them like a real space patroller. But say, listen, here's another way I like to eat checks. Right out of the box, any time I get hungry. Yes, sir, gang, checks are top for snacks because they're tops for taste. Smoking rockets, nothing beats that swell toasted taste. Real keen and crispy delicious. And size? Man, oh man, checks are tops for size. Their modern bite-sized design is just right for easy eating. So, space patrollers, any time you get hungry, reach for that red and white checkerboard package of checks. Pack them in your pockets before you blast off for play. Pack them in your lunchbox for a swell recess snack time. Checks, rice or wheat, tops for taste, for size, for get up and go, and tops for snacks, too. Space patrollers, maybe you think you don't like salads. Well, here are some that are really different. One's called Funny Bunny Salad. Fun to look at, neat to eat. Made of cling peaches and cottage cheese. Teamed up with crispy, crunchy rye crisp. Smoking rockets, it's delicious. Tell Mom to look for these swell salad recipes and the fixings for them at her grocer's. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are in a surface car speeding down a highway toward Lowell City on the planet Mars. It looks like we're going to make it, Commander. If anyone was going to stop us, well, they've lost their chance. Commander, look! I see it, Hap. It's an atmosphere ship, and it's swooping down right on top of us. It's a Cobra gang, and there's no way we can fight them off. That's what they're waiting for. If that ship is on, they're close enough to blast us to pieces. Uh-oh. What's that? It's a magnetic holding field. Smoke and rockets are picking up the car. We'll help us. If they cut that field, we'll crash. Be sure to join us again next week for the thrilling story... The Zero Ray, when rice checks and wheat checks again present Space Patrol! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. Other players were Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, Stephen Robertson, and Bela Kovach. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks again present Space Patrol! Space Patrollers, this is Commander Corey. Whenever fires, floods, or any disaster strikes your town, the Red Cross is right there to answer your call for help. Now, the Red Cross is calling on you to help keep this wonderful service rolling. I want all of you to answer the Red Cross call. Give your dimes and nickels to the 1954 Campaign Fund. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces.